there, guys. Very quickly, we're going to look at everything about your pylon platy helmets. Oh, yes. You can see this beautiful and lovely worm that we have here, right? Oh, yeah. You can see that from the body, it is very soft. <laughs> okay. Your phylum platy helmets, what and what are we going to learn there? First, the spelling of platyamite is very important. The spelling is like this, platy, platy, right? Then you now have your helminths, helminths, tis, t h e s. Are you getting it now? So this is the spelling. Don't go and make mistake. Platy, then helminths, but we call it your what? Your platy helminths. And this is our what? Our lesson one. We are going to go together. You know. Um, Sir Emmy gave you your 2 p c p and Maya, where he told you that we have your 2P, that's PP, then your CP, then your what? Namaya, Namaya, AD. He told you that we have what is called your protozoa, that after protozoas, all others are called your what? Your metazoans, right? And in the metazoans, we have your poriferas, your culenterata. Sir Emmy has treated your protozoas, your porifera, do jam. Ah, uh, well, don't really have ask questions from Porifera. He has treated also your Kuleterata with you. So you're supposed to know these classes before coming down first to Platyel Mines. So I'm going to teach you your Platyel Mites, your Nematodas, your um, Anelidas, your Molluscas, your Atropoda, and your what? Echinodermata. Well, yeah, let's go. As you look at your Platyel Mines together. So in our Platyel Mites, the quick question is, what? Are uh, platyemites for the definition? Just go straight. Tell us that your platyemites are a group of what unsegmented. Now follow me. You see this one. What type? What type of worm is this? That's a species of your what your tenia. Are you getting it now? Which is your tape worm? It is a species under your tenia. That's under your tenia species. Are you getting that's your tenia saginata? That's the worm in particular. The worm look as though it is segmented. No, it is not actually segmented. This worm is unsegmented. It is just external demarcations you are seeing there. It is not segmented internally. You can't, if for example, you take your earthworm. If you cut earthworm into two, what happens to it? One part can go on its own and go and live its own separate life. But you can't do that to this worm. It's just going to die straight. Earthworm will not die Every part will live independently on their own because earthworm is a what a segmented worm. But platyemites, they are unsegmented worms. That's number one thing you should know. Number two is that they have soft body. Soft body. They are unsegmented, soft bodied. Number three, they are dosu ventrally flattened. Ay, 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 ay. What does it mean for something to be dosal ventrally? Dosal is talking about the back. The back side is the dosal surface. The front is the ventral surface. So front and back, the worm is flat. Oh, it's just like, for example, now you tell a lady that she's dosal ventrally flattened. What are you saying? Front and back, she's flat. You know, she'll be angry with you, right? Yeah, let's go. So your platyamite, they are dosal ventrally flattened. Front and back, they are flat. And then they are also what? Invertebrates. What are they? Invertebrates. So these are your what? Your platyamites. Just know the definition. Platyamites are a group of unsegmented soft body those who ventrally flatten the invertebrates. Ah, yeah. Sapita, how do I remember this in exam condition? It's very simple. Just remember this acronym for me USB. What's your USB? Unsegmented soft body. So you see it now, the DFI. What's DFI? Those who ventrally flatten the vertebrates. Ah, that's all. What to go? What are platyamites? Platyamites are a group of what? Unsegmented, soft bodied. Those who ventrally what? Flattened in vertebrates. That's all. USB DFI. Want to go? Close your eyes. I said close down. Close down. No, they look me. What are platyamites? Platyamites are a group of what? Unsegmented, soft body. Those who ventrally flattened what? In vertebrates. Does it make sense? Hold on a bit. The complete series of classes, right? As far as your syllabus is concerned regarding your jam awaek. Everything has been covered in details for you in the LearnLift app. And guess what? The sweet part is that you have access to your CBT, right? 
you have access to your video lessons, you have access to your notes, you have access to your past questions. Everything from the beginning to the end is directly in the Lendlift app for you. So all you have to do is just map down to Play Store or App Store and download the Lendlift app where you follow all your classes from the beginning to the end. A quick one before we move, let's get back to class. Enjoy. If you get that very quickly with me, please, let's rock. Take note that the word platyemite is a Greek word. It's gotten from two Greek words that came together. What are the two Greek words that form your platyemites? Number one is called platis. Platis. Number two is called your helminthis. Helminthis. So we have your platis and your helminthis coming together to form your platyemites. So your platis, it means flat. Your helminthes means what? Warm. So what does the word platyemite mean? It means your what? Your flat one. Platy, flat, helminthes one. If I combine them together, what do we say? We say that your platyemites are commonly called your what? Your flat one. That's exam question one. Never to play with. Another name for your platyemites. What do we call them? Flat ones. So when I just say flat ones, what are they? Platyemites. And you can see that this is your tape one, right? Front and back, those who ventrally they are what flattened. Does it make sense? If you get that very quickly with me, what are the examples of your platyemites that we should know? Now, here is the catch there are four examples of platyemites that Jam and Waek they always revolve around. How many four? How many four? They always revolve around them. Number one is called your planaria. This guy here is your planaria. That's number one. Number two is called your blood fluke. What's number two called blood fluke? Number three is called your liver fluke. What's number three called liver fluke? Number one, planaria. Number two, blood fluke. Number three, liver fluke. You can see that two and three, both of them are flukes, right? And then number four is called your tapeworm. Number four is what's your tapeworm? And inside the tapeworm, you can see that there are two major species of tapeworm, right? As we move, I will explain all of them to you. Your tenia solium and your tenia saginata. But come, come, come. How do I remember them? It's very simple. Just tell me that they are what? Your PFT. What's your PFT? Your P, planaria, F, your flukes. And the flukes are two. Your blood fluke and your liver fluke. And the T is your what? Your tenia or your tapeworm. Ah. So your tapeworm is the fourth one. Simple. Want to go? Give me the example. Your planaria, your flukes. The flukes are either your blood fluke or your liver fluke. And then we have your words, your tape on. These are the four common examples that we have for your words, platyema that Jan will not play with. If you get this very quickly with me. Now, the question is, um, what is the difference in their example that we should know? The common difference in their example, number one, take note that planaria, they are free living. Planaria, what? Free living. It's either you are a parasite or you are free living. So planaria, are they parasites or they are free living? They are free living. And again, planaria are aquatic animals. That's why we said that planaria, they are free-living aquatic animals. Unlike your flukes and your tapeworms that are parasitic, where do you see your flukes and your tapeworm? They are inside the body of what humans or what animals. That's how you see them. That's why your liver fluke, liver fluke, blood fluke. Of course, now, inside the body, that's how you see them. Tapeworm, where do you see them? Inside the body, whether human or what animals. But planarias, no, they are not found as endoparasites. Never. You see them as free living organisms and they are aquatic. Are you getting it? If you get that very fast with me, no stress. Answer these past questions for me very quickly. Jam and why question. Look at the first question that Jam will not play with. 1981 question 40. Jam asks this question. Flat worms and round worms are said to be invertebrates because. Opu yes. Come, your flat worms, what are they? Platyemites. Round worms are the nematodes. When we get there, we explain. Flat worms are the platyemites. Round worms are the nematodes. The two of them are said to be invertebrates because option A says they are small animals. That's not true. Option B says they can live inside vertebrates. They can live inside vertebrates. That means they can live inside the body. Like, for example, man is a vertebrate. Can they live inside the body of man? Yes. Flat one can live inside the body of man, but not all of them. Planaria is free living. Your round one can also live inside the body of man. So we cannot 100% vouch for option B. Option C says 
some of them are unicellular. It is not true. Your flatworm and your roundworm, they are strictly multicellular. Are you getting it? Option D says they have no backbone. They have no backbone. Invertebrates don't have backbone. Aya. That is making option D a strong point. And then option E says they are parasitic. But your planaria is flatworm. And your planaria, which is flatworm or platyamite, it is your what? Free living and not parasitic. So we cannot really vouch for option E. What is the correct answer? Option D is our strong point here. They have no what? Backbone. So all your invertebrates, they have no backbone. That's one distinguishing character about invertebrates. From your two PCP namea, that's your PPCP namea. What do we have there? Your protozoa, your peripherals, your polenterata, your platyamites, your nematodas, your anelidas, your molluscas, atropodas, and echinodermata. All of them are invertebrates. And because they are invertebrates, they have no backbone. All of them. So when it comes to creating an account, right? This is the interface of the app that you can see. You can see create account and you can also see login. Now, what you do is this. As a new user, I don't have an account yet. So you don't need to go and log in. You go and create an account as a new user. Click on that create account button. Once you click, click on it, the next thing is put your phone number. Place in your phone number. You can see plus two, three, four. Then put your phone number, whatever your phone number is. If you don't have phone, you can use your mommy's phone number and put it there, right? Or your daddy's phone number. Use it and then you can proceed and create the account. So let's go. So once you create the account, you are putting your phone number. What happened? Put your name, your correct phone number, please. Put your name. If your name is um, John, what do you fill in there? John. And then your last name, Frank. Fill in John Frank. And what's your email address? Okay. If your email address is um, John Frank, John Frank 3 at gmail.com, you fill it there. And then your password, very important. You create your own password, six digits. You can use your phone number, the first six digits of your phone number, or the last six digits of your phone number. Or you can, okay, since the, um, um, your name is John Frank, you can say, okay, well, my um, password name is John, right? John123. And then you go and repeat the same thing, confirm password. What will you type there? Your John words. One, two, three. You can decide to view it to yes or so, and then see whether you are doing the same thing, whether what you are doing is correct, right? All you have to do is just click the I button there and then you view it. And then come to select education. You are preparing for JAM or YEC. In select education, there are four plans there. University, that's for people that are in university. Probably 100 level, 200 level, right? Yes, their classes are also there. Secondary for those in secondary school, primary, but for Jam and Waek, ah, ah, baba, click Waek Jam Pursuit TME, right? As the select education, select level. You are not preparing for Pursuit TME, you are preparing for Jam and Waek, right? Okay, click on the word Jam and what Waek. And then create your account. Two seconds, plus, you don't enter. It will load and then it will open for you. And it will tell you, welcome, John, right? Your classes are now what? Ready. What do you do? Start learning. Does it make sense? Answer this question for me. Why 2014 question 7. Why brought this lovely question. And the question says, what does the term platyamites refers to? We said that it's gotten from two Greek words. Your platys, which means your what? Flat. And helminthes, which means warm. Hence, your platyamites are what? Your flat worms. Option A says segmented worms. That's not true. Which one is your segmented worms? Anneli. Where you have earthworm. Earthworm is under annelid. That's your annelida. Earthworms are segmented worms or annelids in general. They are segmented worms. Option B says round worms. No, it's still not true. Nematodes are the ones that are called the words round worms. Option C says flat worms. Making sense because platyamites are flat worms. Option D says annelids. Ah ah. Annelids are segmented worms now. Either you call it segmented worms or ringed worms animals. These are the annelids. What is the correct answer? Get out. Also, what? C is the correct answer. Shall you see the way we are dismantling them? We well, are answer this question for me. Jam 1998 question 4. The question not the way says, which of the following organism is a free living, free living 
aquatic animal. If you feel like go vex, what is the answer? Option A say tapeworm. No, tapeworm is parasitic. Option B say blood fluke. Blood fluke is also parasitic. Are you getting me? Option C says live by fluke, parasitic. Option D says planaria. Planaria is a free living aquatic animal. And all of them, whether tapeworm, blood fluke, liver fluke, planaria, all of them are under your what your platyamides. So out of these four examples of platyamides that are the popular examples, which one is your free living aquatic animal? Planaria is the correct answer. That is option D, correct? Does it make sense? You get that? Answer this question. Why 2016 question four? All the way, the question says, which of the following is not an example of platyamides? Which one is not example of platyamides? Option A, say tapeworm. Tapeworm, P, F, T. Your platyema, F, that's your planaria, your flukes, and your tapeworms. All of them are example of platyamides. Option B says blood fluke. Fluke is example of platyamides. Option C says earthworm. No, earthworm is what? Anelida. Option D says liver fluke. Liver fluke is also a fluke. That's your what? Platyamides. Which one is not an example of platyamides? Option what C is the correct answer. She you see, simple, simple things. Jamma work very easy and what directs you out of there. If you get that, well, let's rock the characteristics features of your platyamide. Are you ready? Here is where the reteaching begin from. In the characteristics features of your platyamide, I'm gonna give you nine characteristics, nine, nine features of platyamide. So sit tight, flow with me, and then let's rock it together. Number one is called your body structure. What is number one called body structure? Under the body structure, I'd like you to note this that they are bilaterally symmetrical. Ay, 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 ay. And your platyamides are they radially? Listen, organisms are either radially symmetrical or they are bilaterally symmetrical or they are asymmetrical. Asymmetrical means no symmetry. Bilaterally symmetrical means you can divide it into two equal halves from one plane. Radially symmetrical, you can divide it into as many as possible, into equal halves, right, from the central axis. For example, now, this is your orange, right? I can divide orange into two like this. It is two halves. I can divide orange into two like this. It is still two halves. I can divide the orange into two like this. It is two halves. This is the central axis. You can divide it into multiple points, multiple um, segments, right? Two halves, so, right? But any area you are coming from, you can divide it into as many as possible. That kind of symmetry is called radial symmetrical. Now, in bilateral symmetry, you can only divide the organism into two equals through one central axis, one. Your platyamides are bilaterally symmetrical. Human being, we are bilaterally symmetrical because you can just divide us into two halves through only one plane. If you come and divide like this through this plane, like this, are you getting it? Simon, we explain all of this. Simon has already explained those things to you. If you divide the human like this, are you getting it? What happens? You are not going to have two equal halves. Does it make sense? That kind of symmetry is not bilateral symmetrical. Now, please, your platyamides, my thought are they, they are bilaterally symmetrical. That's number one. Number two, they are dosoventrally flattened. We have already explained it. The front and back, they are what? Flattened. Another thing you must know is that your platyamides are triploblastic. Triploblastic. So, triploblasticity is a character of platyamides. If you don't know this is where you enter jam, my brother, wait till you can't know. Wait till you come the enter jam hall for shade the wine. Well, let me more they go. Don't forget, I told you that we have your P P C P now what maya, right? Oh yes, a chino dentist. And then it lasts. Come, 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 listen. All others that come before your platyamides. Again, let me rewind. Say so you see your protozoa, your porifera, your collaterata. If I'm looking at them, right? There is nothing that consigns triploblasticity. In fact, your colon traits are diploblastic. By diploblastic means that they have just two gem layers. You see, the first invertebrate that is triploblastic is your platyamides. So triploblasticity starts from what platyamides. So platyamide, triploblastic, nematoblastic, and triploblastic, annelid, triploblastic, doesn't make sense. 
So platyamide, they are the ones that start that what's triploblasticity. But cooling traits are diploblastic. Come on. What do we mean when we say they are triploblastic? First, they are the first group of organisms to have three gem layers. Try three. Three gem layers. That's what they have. What are the three gem layers? Your ectoderm, your mesoderm, and your endoderm. Ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. Outer gem layer, ectoderm. Middle gem layer, mesoderm. Inner gem layer, endoderm. When you look at your cholentrate, your cholenterata, they lack one of those three gem layers. What they lack is the middle gem layer. That's the word mesoderm. So your cholentrate lack mesoderm, platyamides. Ay, 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 ay. Platyamides have what? Mesoderm. That's a past question. Another thing you should not forget is that a cilium matter is what your platyamides they are. They are a ciliumate. Organisms are either a ciliumate, pseudo ciliumate, or ciliumate. But first, before I move on, please, which one is your um, platyamides? Platyamides are a ciliumate. If an organism is a ciliumate, it means they lack true body cavity. They lack what? True body cavity. They lack what? True body cavity. Your platyamides, are they a ciliumate? Pseudo ciliumate or ciliumate? They are a ciliumate. A means absent. Absent of that true body cavity. That's what they do. Give me the three things to know that body structure. Number one, on that platyamide, they are bilaterally symmetrical, right? And they are dosoventrally flattened. Number two, they are triploblastic, meaning that they have three gem layers. And they are the first group of organisms to have three gem layers, which are the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Your cholentrates, cholenterata, they only have two gem layers, ectoderm and endoderm. But your platyamides that are triploblastic, they have mesoderm, making it three. Number three is that they are a ciliumate, meaning that they lack true body cavity. If you just get this, I just explain now. Fire down this question for me. <laughs> Now that you have created your account, right, for you to start learning, what do you do? Okay, you can see that your use of English is there, mathematics is there, biology is there, physics is there, chemistry is there. Your classes are organized, they are all there for you, right? What do you do? Okay, um, I want to start learning biology. So click on the biology, immediately you click on it, living organisms, that's chapter one, right? Oh yes, that's strictly to your jam syllabus. And what happened? Let's say, for example... Um, you want to watch your class on cell and probably cell structure, right? What happens is that you click on it. Immediately you click on it, you see all the classes will display history of cell, types of cell, cell organs, and all of that. Okay, sir, I want to watch history of cells. You click on the history of cell immediately. Hello, friends. Your class will start playing for you. It says easy and not. It will start playing for you easy and direct. And what happened? We can even choose to make it full screen. Right, make it full screen. What happens? You are not learning, and you are enjoying your classes. In fact, you may choose to say, Okay, I want to download my classes. In fact, you can fast forward, you can take it backwards, you can pause, you can rewind. Anyone you want to do, you can even say, Oh, sir, I want to download my classes. Right, probably you am um, use night up just to click on download buttons. When you click on download button, you see the download. Before you know what will happen, the download will start what loading. As it start loading, you can see it is moving. Fia, 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 fia. <laughs> and then it's the entire your phone. Are you getting it now? You can now go and start watching your words, your downloaded classes. You can download as many classes as possible as you want to download. Now, you can even choose to say, okay, well, Sada said no. The notes underneath it is the same thing for everything. I want to download my notes. All you have to do is click on the what the download for your notes before you know what is happening. Fia! It has entered your phone. You may choose to come to the notes, right? Under the characteristics of living things, let me open the notes and read the notes and go through the past questions. So you see, well organized and structured notes direct to the points, focusing on your syllabus for you. There are past questions for you in abundance. You see, you have your past questions here. You can choose to say, okay, I want to zoom it in, right? And then the same thing for all subjects, and you are following the answers are there. Number one answer is B. Why is the answer B? It is explained for you in details, every singular thing. And then you are following your classes 
you then you are done with that you come to the next you see your notes everything structured and organized to the core in fact at the end of the day there is a blow piece for you you have done well get out you too much everything is structured and organized for you in the app right and yeah you can now choose to say okay sir what about um chemistry classes or physics classes you can do same use of english all of them they are there when you click on your chemistry classes what happens separation of missions and between. all of them are in line with your uh jam syllabus chemical combination right it just goes straight you see chapter one alone has 39 videos 39 you sit yourself down now and you start learning and you are following all of them one after the what order doesn't make sense are you with me where you want to access your download classes all you have to do is just scroll down right on your home interface go to your access your download um classes start now you start you see them right in fact you may even choose to go and practice cbt right or pass question let's say for example i go to my cbt the one that has to do with my um um my biology then i have to take all the questions on that cell probably your um yx cell or the champ question on it right just to click on it so you see all the questions are there there are 40 questions there for you already all of them on that cell what happened which of the following cell inclusion can destroy other cell organelles probably you now say go oh, some answer is like slice or some more you choose it you go to next like that at the end of the day you see your answer see your corrections all of these things are in the learn lift app directly for you are you with me so as far as your jam 2025 is concerned my dear you don't have an excuse whatsoever to have anything less than 300. Are you with me? All your classes are available for you. All you have to do, start learning now. Download the LearnLift app now. Jam 1992 question 4. Look at the intelligent question that Jam asked. Jam said, a major difference between platyamides and cholentrates is that platyamides do what? Option A. Platyamides are multicellular. No, that's not true. Platyamides and cholentrates, both of them are multicellular. So I can't choose option A. Shall you see now? Option B says they have developed a mesodem. Platyamides have developed a mesodem. Because they've developed mesodem, that means they should have endodem. That's your ectodem, mesodem, and endodem. How many gem layer is that? Three. Does it make sense? Yes. Platyamides have mesodem, but cholentrates lack mesodem. They only have two gem layers. Option C says they reproduce sexually. Ah, this is not a strong point now. Option D says they reproduce asexually. What is the correct answer? Option B is the correct answer. Platyamides have developed a what? A mesodem. How do we know? Because platyamides are triploblastic. Does it make sense? And because they are triploblastic, that condition is called the word tri triploblasticity. If you understand that very quickly, oh yeah, very fast. Answer this question for me. Jam 1992, question 5. Look at the intelligent question that Jam brought. Jam says the essential structural difference between hydra and a tapeworm. Now come. Hydra is a cholentrate. Tapeworm is platyamite. Are you getting it now? The essential difference now between Hydra and Tapeworm is that while Hydra, what's happening to Hydra? While Hydra is what? Has tentacles. Does Hydra have tentacles? Yes. Tapeworm is parasitic. That's true. Yes. Option B says Hydra is diploblastic. But don't forget that this option is true. B says Hydra is diploblastic. Colenterata, they have two gem layer. That means Hydra is diploblastic. True. Tapeworm is triploblastic. That's also true. Sure, you see two answers are looking through there. Option C says Hydra has a mouth. Tapeworm feeds by their suckers. No, tapeworm does not feed by their suckers. Their suckers are for attachment and not for feeding. When we get there, we explain it in details for you. Option C says Hydra has a mesodem. Tapeworm has a mesoglia. Ay, 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 ay. Never. Listen carefully. The answer is between option A and option B. The question said the essential structural difference. Out of the differences, which one is the essential one? Listen. If they ask you a question from Hydra and your tapeworm, that's your um, cholentrate and your platyamite. What the, the major thing there is their triploblasticity. Gem layers. 
Your tape worm, which is your platyamide, they have three gem layer that's their triploblastic, but your hydra, which is a colentrit, has two gem layer that's diploblastic. What is the answer? Option B is the correct answer. That's the essential word difference. Does it make sense? If you get that very quickly with me, guess what? I'm going to continue with number two, which is what digestive system quickly. So, in the digestive system, I told you I'm going to give you 19 so together. Number two is digestive system. What is the digestive system of platyamides like? Follow me. Number one, don't forget that they have incomplete or absent allometric canal. So, it is either their digestive system is incomplete or it is totally what absent. In tapeworms, most especially, digestive system is what absent. So, tapeworms. Do they have digestive system? No. There is a good example of your tape on. This is your tape on here. That's your tenure what sardinata. That's what we have there. It has no allometric canal or digestive system. And don't forget that digestion in your platyamite is typically intracellular. How is it like intracellular? Intracellular. Is it extracellular or intracellular? Intracellular. Oh, Sapita, is it intracellular or extracellular? Intracellular. Don't forget that. And also, tapeworm absorb nutrients. Where do they reside? They reside in the small intestine where there is digested food. And because there is digested food in the small intestine, that's where they reside. So they don't need to go and process their own food already because the food is already digested, right? Because that food is digested, they just absorb the nutrients directly into their body so how do they absorb food by their words body surface so they absorb the food directly by their body surface from the most digested food the food that is in your small intestine is already digested all the bomb need to do they will attach themselves to your small intestine and they now absorb digested food from your small intestine by simple words diffusion that's all are you getting it now? If you understand that very quickly with me, bro, answer this question. 1982 question 13. See what Jam brought. A tapeworm has no allometric canal because... Why is it that they don't have allometric canal? Option A, it is autotrophic. Autotrophic means that they will manufacture their own food by themselves. That's not true. Option B says, it does not feed. It's not true. They feed. They feed on already digested food that is in the small intestine. Option C says, it has no enzymes. Just the waiting, they play. Option D is it absorbs food. It absorbs what digested food. What type of food? The body of the tapeworm absorbs digested food. Ah, yeah, making sense. Option D is the sucker on the scolex suck blood is not true. Suckers are for attachment, not for sucking blood. What is the answer? Option D is the correct answer. So their body, their body surface is called jument. So that their body surface that we call tegument absorbs digested food. That means option D, the correct answer. Are you getting it now? If you understand this very quickly, please, what about their nervous system? What should we know? In the next class, we are going to continue straight from the nervous system that we have in your words, your platyamides. For the now, peace out. Hope you've enjoyed this class. Guess what? To follow up for more classes, just download the LearnLift app, whether on Play Store or App Store, and then follow up your classes. You must do extremely well. I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.